go. Underway here at the Dante meeting, legendary day. A little bit slowly into stride. He's going to be dropped in, perhaps, from the outside draw. One or two of them coming across, including Sam Cook, who's being dropped in. But uh, way to a good start on the inside is Agero. Wider out, Surrey Miss, keeping a wider path there from his high draw. Racing there together with Crystal Delight. Thundering is right up there with them as well as they settle down. A crossing of the first two furlongs. It's Thundering taking on Zane Knights with Agero restrained back in third on the rail. Surrey Mist up there in about second place as well, trapped by Crystal Delight. Behind them, racing in sixth place is Forza Orta. Dark Jedi is next. Scampi in the black and white follows. Then Lucanda, who's restrained with uh, Real Dream on that one's outside. That Next to the rail then is White Wolf in the raw blue of Godolphin. Legendary Day is next, sends Sam Cook typewriter. And Tasman Bay brings up the rear, about eight lengths off the speed then as they go past the seven furlong marker. Maybe a bit more of a stretch than eight lengths now for being first and last. Could be up to 10 lengths. The pace seems to be a reasonable one as they approach the halfway stage in the contest. The Skybet race to the Ebor Jorvik handicap. Thundering being held together in front by Tom Eves. Leading by about a neck or so on the outside there, a deep is Crystal Delight. The grey there, Surrey Miss, right with the leading trio as well. Zane Knight next to the rail as they move down the side of the course and approach the home straight now. Zane Knight's in a share of fourth place with Forza Orta in the yellow and white colours. Just behind them, Scampi just angling for a run up the inner is Dark Jedi. Lucanda, no move yet. Ryan is working away on Real Dream behind them, uh, being pushed along. Legendary Day getting closer in the green and white hoops with a white cap. Sam Cook likewise, and White Turf behind that one. White Wolf, rather, behind that one in the royal blue colours. Uh, they race up towards the final two and a half furlongs here, and Thundering has still got the lead, but he's being pressed on all sides. On the near side, Surrey Miss there with Forza Orta. Behind them, Scampi travelling ever so strongly for Haley in the black and white colours. Zane Knight's up the inner. Dark Jeddah on the far side. They race up and towards the final furlong now. And Scampi's come through here for Haley and leading by a couple of lengths, having travelled beautifully throughout the race. Sam Cook is chasing hard with Real Dream, who's really staying on powerfully, but up towards the line. Scampi goes on to win. Sam Cook second. Real Dream and Typewriter, who stayed on nicely. In a photo for third, just ahead of Surrey Mist. And behind these, Forza Orta. Scampi has won the Jorvik handicap in the hands of Hayley Turner for Andrew Balding. That's the first winner in the race share colours. And what a big one it is. In second, it is Sam Cook for Rafe Beckett and Rob Hornby. It's close in third, but it looked like real dream for Ryan Moore. And Sir Michael Stout had bagged that spot ahead of the stable companion of the winner, typewriter, written by Harry Davis. But we'll get that confirmed for you in a few moments' time. 16 to 1, Scampi is returned. And you mentioned beforehand, Chris, well done. That you thought the horse would run well at a big price. Yeah, and he has done. He's, um, he's travelled into it very kindly. I think just getting into this type of scenario and back on a quicker surfaces suited him he went the right way last year he's moved into it very very easily hasn't he much more easily than real dream who was off the bridle a good bit earlier than a, a fair number of them but has done a lot of good late running um i suspect that he is a well handicapped horse he's maybe going to come on for this mentally it might be that um he wants a little bit further looking at the way that he's run here it might be that he wants something on his head to sharpen him up it could just be experience because it's a different type of race than he's been in the past but i'd stand by that the third horse real dream is probably a very well handicapped one but so was scampi and andrew balding doesn't often put them in off very light weights in these handicaps and when he does He's got a pretty good record. Yeah. So in the early stages, uh, Surrey Mist has confirmed, by the way, that Real Dream is third. So in the early stages, Surrey Mist, and Kevin Pittipart before he was talking about maybe holding that horse up, it looked like the horse jumped, got to the fore, and he's in um, a, a bit of a battle for the lead in the early stages. There's a few of them that want to go forward, and it's Thunderous who wins that fight. Yeah, the, there's a few of them that are sort of taking the riders on a little bit, and it, it's hard to, to get home if, if you like this at York and you can see where the principles have come from they're a good way further back Sam Cook, he's right at the back of the field typically for him, travelled into it very strongly Scampi's also uh, towards the rear and if you keep an eye on Real Dream through the race he doesn't travel as fluently as that pair that he was behind but he does his good late work um, Crystal delights. He's just not really run his race at all. And he he's was hanging right. right. Yeah. Quite badly right around that bend. Yeah, he, he wasn't happy from a, quite an early stage, and, and he's just not given his running.
He really hasn't. That's him in the, the pink colours in about share a third place. And you'll see as we go around the bend that he's just hanging out to his right. And for whatever reason, he's not in the mood today. Maybe not suited by this track at all. You can see Scampi in the four of mid division. He's got the eventual third just behind him. The eventual second, Sam Cook, who's a very capable horse in these kind of races, yeah. is towards the rear. This is his bag, isn't it, Sam Cook? He's, he's good in this type of scenario. He might not have loads and loads in hand of his mark generally but when he gets in these type of races he's he's just got all the tools to run well in them and he has done so once again uh, you can see how far off the, how far out uh, real dream is off the bridle and, and sam cook cruises past him but he he responds very willingly doesn't he the third horse um i think those that were up there from an early stage have, have just given this a little chance really it's been yeah. an honestly run race from early on and they were fighting the riders whilst racing honestly yes absolutely sam cook was just following scampi through scampi managed to get through quite easily sam cook has just had to wriggle through a little bit but in the end i think scampi's run it quite easily yeah the he was steadily improving last season and exposed at this trip probably get further he's won quite snugly in the end actually bearing in mind that he's being chased down by a horse that stays further typewriters run yeah, stronger as well he's done very well she. he's uh, she's finishing off um, very well crystal delight actually finished close than i ended up yeah. considering how yeah. he'd gone um, I'd like to know from Jim what, what he felt, and I need to sort of go back over his record right-handed, uh, which off the top of my head I'm not sure about. But typewriters went excellently there, hasn't she? And she's been highly tried last season, and the last time she ran in a handicap, she was £14 pounds lower than this. Yeah. Uh, and they, beaten. Yeah, they took three off with Harry's claim, but uh, my thinking beforehand was really that she was perhaps handicapped up to her best, but it looks like she's found a little bit more from three to four. Yeah, it really does. It really does. Um, Unibetter Canova with a 25 to 1 quote for the Ebor for this win and your in race and 16 to 1 quote from Skybet as well. And you'd think that the race share syndicate might be quite tempted. Yeah. Um, massive race to go for and a horse that's like to improve for a bit further. Yeah, you would think so. And the third horse looks like one for, for that type of race as well, but he's going to need to uh, get up the weights a little bit more obviously I expect that will be the case but strong handicap form isn't it the the winner I think I agree was snugly enough on top and he's going to get further and does look a horse that this type of race is always going to suit well given the type that he is mm, indeed I think there'll be more to come from type right a real dream as well disappointments in the race I mean I think the ones that were always towards the four early you can give most of them a pass I think yeah I, th I think so um, I think it's one of those that if you can find the horse that, that was faring best of those that were up there and lasted the longest then you can probably mark up the effort um, it's probably so we missed, a little isn't it? bit probably is yeah um and, and it is, for all that Surrey missed so far this season, hasn't perhaps been um, right up to the best of his form. He's maybe shown that he's getting back there today, even though the finishing position might not suggest it. OK, so there's the uh, race share ownership syndicate, syndicate in the winner's enclosure for this opening race with their winner, Scampi, trained by Andrew Balding, ridden by Hayley Turner, the winner of the Yorvik.